This is Twit. So, Paul, where did you write this rant? Were you uh, on rant? a on, <laughs> <laughs> wait <laughs> on a plane? You were good. I th I thought you socked it to him. You had a big scoop. Uh, oh. All about the problems with Surface devices. We were complaining. F you had a, I had a Surface Book. You had the Surface Pro 4. Yep. And both of us were complaining for, I would say, almost eight months about the hot bag problem, about weird, Yep. you know, pa not just power issues, but mostly power issues, weird issues. Uh, we suffered through it. We survived. Firmware updates finally fixed the problem. As Microsoft mm -hmm. famously said, it was a tough computer problem. They said they blamed... <laughs> Intel for yeah. uh, a challenging uh, Skylake, a, a buggy Skylake. Uh, yep. You you blew the lid off that excuse. Well, you know it's funny. I feel uh, it, we, so. There was the original Surface Gate, which is what you're referring to. This is from early 2016, when, like you mm -hmm. said, we were waiting for a long time to get answers and to get fixes for those Surface products. Um, and then there's been the more recent event with Consumer Reports, where they dropped their recommendation for Surface products. And there's been some interesting back and forth about that. And uh, a lot of people are coming to Microsoft's defense as if rising up against consumer reports is a smart thing to do, but whatever. Um, <laughs> those evil consumer uh, reports know, people. Those yeah, evil one-sided bastards yeah. over consumer reports. You know. I think the point um, to be made, and I've made it a couple of times, is while you and I, uh, you know, uh, besides those early power issues, we didn't experience any defects, but but Super Reports surveys, and I know because I'm a member, uh, their membership every year, and yeah. they are the they are I think one of the few groups that really has long term reliability reports because of that survey. Yeah. And I've always yeah, trusted yeah, them for no, cars I, and appliances. I, this is the thing, you know. I, I, <laughs> it's funny things happen to you in life, and it, it kind of forces you to look at a different part of the world that you never understood before. And of course, you wrestle with these issues that other people just sort of natively understand. So when it comes to Consumer Reports. Uh, they've been doing this for decades with a long variety of products. And, um, you know, cars are a great example. People who buy cars in the United States, a lot of times, will look at the reliability data that the Consumer Reports uh, compiles. And it's, it's very accurate and very helpful if you're buying an expensive product like that. And uh, Mary Jo and I were talking before the show, and one of the things uh, I kind of brought up at that time was just this notion of, you know, reliability data from the past kind of influences mm -hmm. your belief about a product's reliability going forward as well. And so if you have a product that's built on the same platform, one might expect the next version will, will have the same problems, unless the automaker, in this case, addresses them. Um, when you have a new product, uh, in other words, like a Jetta or something, a new platform, they've completely changed the car, uh, that first year, especially the first several months, is a little tough because you don't really have enough data to understand how things have changed. Right. So, And what if you were in a position you never built a car before? Yes, and this was yes. your very first car. Right, maybe you, you made the engine before, but you don't understand how that thing connects to wheels, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Right. I think That's it's, it seems like Microsoft's always made uh, PCs, but they haven't. This is their; these are their first. No, brand new. It's their, it's PCs. new. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, over the weekend, uh, great timing because I was flying home on Monday. Um, <laughs> I saw a, an internal memo from Panos Panay describing the surface reliability issues in great detail to his team. And um, I was able to put that together, that information with some other stuff I had gotten from sources over the past several months about surface uh, to add some context to it. What's interesting is since this, since I wrote this, of course, I spent, like I said, I spent 23 hours disconnected from the world, got home, crashed, got up, got in a car and drove to Pennsylvania. Um, I have some further context to add to this, which I think will bring the story full circle finally, um, which is kind of interesting. And so I guess the basic background of this is that, yes, Microsoft had some big uh, reliability issues with Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book, and their internal data confirms that. We've, we've always known that to be the case, but, you know, they've we had some problems. experienced it directly. Now, right, but let's, uh, let's, qual let's qualify how bad it was, because this was the shocking part to me in your story. Mm -hmm. it, micro so you, this memo you saw has the return rates for right. the first Surface Pro 4s and the first Surface Books right when they came out. And they it was 17 and 16%. Yeah. That seems big. huge to me. I mean, I don't know what an average return rate is on a new product, but when I saw that, I was like, okay, we knew there were problems with this, but I didn't think they were that bad. Yeah, that's right. almost 1 in 5. That's huge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. 
And that's Microsoft's so, own data. This isn't like somebody guessing this number. This is their data from a leaked memo that was not supposed to yeah. go outside the company. If you're the looking at the, uh, bar, the, the line graph uh, on Paul's uh, article, I'm showing it on the screen if you're watching video. The blue line is Surface Pro 3. Surface Pro 4 is the orange line. The yellow line is Surface Book, which all along had the highest return rate. Surface yep. Studio. Yeah, I have some so, theories about that too, right, by the way. Right, but uh, it, it's important to understand that like Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book are the same basic computer. Um, the difference is that with Surface Book, they implemented the screen differently, and it has that special clipboard mechanism. And, of course, you can add a dedicated GPU to a Surface Book as well. A lot of um, the problems I had with our, my Surface Book was was with that detach, confusing, that's right. confusing yep. the hell out of it. Conversely, uh, yeah. a lot of the times you can fix problems with Surface Book by detaching it and reattaching it, yeah, right? which right. is the <laughs> Surface Book version of... Uh, right. Turn, turn it, it off. off. Now, this is, the way, return, right. these are, this is the 90-day return rate, but this is for any reason at all. And it could be also just yeah. like, I. that's it, I throw up my hands or I don't like the yep. form fact. It doesn't have to be reliability. We, we, don't, we don't have the data for Surface Pro 1 and 2 in there. But I, if you look at that and you and forget about the spikes for a second, what you're seeing is basically a downward trend, a which is good, time, yeah. until those two new devices were released and then it shot <laughs> back up. But, right. but over time, they go down as well. In fact... They go down and basically get Surface, I would say, back on track overall to where they were heading back in 2014 or whatever that is, 2014. So the, so, the peak was almost 17% on the Surface Book, and that was in yep, yep. that was in November, December 2015. That was shortly, but, that but was even, literally you know, a month or two after it came out. Yeah, yeah, if you look at Surface Pro 3, especially the last couple of years, uh, there are some spikes right around uh, August to October or whatever, yeah. and uh, both of those years. And I wonder if that isn't related to back-to-school purchases. Oh. Um, and so you would see an increase in sales, right. and then for whatever reason, whether it's reliability or otherwise, um, those customers decided, yeah, this isn't for me, and they brought it back. So this is uh, these numbers are a, a percentage, not a raw number. So they're a percentage Sorry. of total Yeah. Uh, so we, don't, we actually, right, by there. the way... That's yet another way to kind of obfuscate yeah. what's actually happening here because, you know, 10% of 100 is one number, but 5% of 700 is a completely different kind of number. And yeah. it, 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 we just don't know, you know, and, and Surface Pro 3, I think it's fair to say over the course of that device's lifetime, probably was selling fewer units each month. And we don't know how that return mm -hmm. rate correlates to that. that they don't provide that information. Um, right. I don't want to get too much into that aspect of it. I, I don't feel that Microsoft is being purposely deceptive internally or externally, but I, they do cherry pick things. Yeah, obviously. And in somebody like in the chat room saying we don't we don't know if these people returned it and got a new one, or returned it and got a different yep. right. one, or returned it yep. and got their money back. None of that is specified. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, listen, we can ra right. We can raise those kind of questions for basically every data point we're going to discuss here. That's the that's one of the problems. <laughs> this is a big yeah. scoop, though, for you, Paul. I mean, this this information because well, okay, didn't they weren't they telling both of you? Oh, it's Lin it's uh, Intel's problem. It's not. Yeah, well, that's well. This is what I wanted. This is the this is right where I think we can bring it full circle today. So, back in early 2016, the story, and I got this from. Uh, multiple, I would say, highly sourced <laughs> sources or highly placed sources of Microsoft was that um, Skylake was the buggiest ever version of an Intel CPU chipset. And, uh, the, of course, Microsoft was first out of the gate um, and with Skylake products, that is, and they had problems immediately. Um, it is interesting, <laughs> you know, to look back at this and realize, because I've talked to PC makers, Mary Jo has, and we've talked to, of course, we talked to numerous owners of devices and actually there were problems that other PC makers with uh, this CPU but not to the, the degree that Microsoft had right and so you could mm -hmm. look at that from a couple of different angles one is that Microsoft was first right and so they got hit in the face with this before anyone understood the problems um, mm -hmm. but the other little bit of context I got uh, literally today was that um, and I actually forgot about this um, Lenovo and HP and Dell and the other PC companies looked at this, had the same ex testing experience that Microsoft did before they released their own products. Microsoft went back to Intel and said, hey, uh, we have this advanced technology in Windows 10, which obviously we're going to support in our own product called Connected Standby. But this thing is failing all the time on Connected Standby. That was the actually the big, big source of the big problem that the Surface devices had. 
And Intel told them they were going to fix it. So Microsoft had, was is kind of faced with a weird choice. They could release new hardware, two devices that first to ship with Windows 10 from Microsoft that don't support a key Windows 10 power management feature. Or you could fix it, you could ship it with that feature enabled, knowing it's not going to work, right? And betting <laughs> that Intel is going to do right by you as its biggest partner and fix this problem, which they did not do. And uh, the result was the return rates you saw and the reliability problems that we all know about. Now, Lenovo, Dell, HP, whoever, uh, they had the same testing experience. And they went to Intel. And they said, hey, this thing's broken. And Intel says, yeah, I know. We're, we're going to fix it. And they said, yeah, screw that. We're not, we're not enabling it. Because those guys <laughs> have much longer experiences with Intel, and they yeah. know how this works. So mm -hmm. that's what they did. They just left it off. And that's why those guys had better reliability experiences than Microsoft mm -hmm. did. Now, I, I, it's a little bit Microsoft, a little bit Intel, right? It's, it's fair to say they both did things wrong or made mistakes, or however you want to say it. But I also think it's fair to remember that in Microsoft's case, they were kind of they were kind of stuck. They had uh, resolved to be first out of the gate with Skylake. They wanted to kind of lead the way with that generation. They have their own, you know, <laughs> wonderful power management technology. Intel's supposed to support it, and uh, man, it took them a long time to fix it. And in this case, I would say, you know, some Microsoft, some Intel, it took them a long time. Microsoft made mistakes. Remember, Microsoft was very quiet about these problems. It never came out. I, the whole point of my Surface Gate article was me saying to those guys, look, you got to stand up on stage like Steve Jobs did at Antenagate and just talk. Explain yourself. Tell people you're going to fix it, you know? Mm. And they declined to do that, <laughs> um, <laughs> as suffice to say. But I think part of the reason was they, by that point, I think they were really unclear on when Intel was going to finally show up and fix this problem. And for the duration, they were kind of hanging there in the wind.